I need to hear your opinions in the comment section below immediately. I see this being a competitive series going back and forth, probably six or seven games. I'll lay out my random thoughts on this matchup, then give you my predictions at the end of the video. Comment yours, have a civil debate with others, leave a like, but now let's get into it. So the Mavericks and Clippers are set to face off in the first round. Now the first problem for the Clippers right now involving this series is where is Kawhi at health-wise? Some speculate that he's just resting until the playoffs seems the most likely. Ty Lue seems pretty confident about that as well. However, some say the injury is worse than what the Clippers are telling us. Nobody really knows besides the Clippers and more importantly, Kawhi Leonard. But here's the issue, and it's been this way for years. The Clippers go as far as Kawhi takes them. When they went on that hot streak during the season where some folks were calling them the best team in the Western Conference, not named the Denver Nuggets, in December through January, that's when they were at their best, going 21-3 during that stretch, Kawhi Leonard was playing like the best player in basketball, 29.3 points per game, 61% from the field, and 50% from three in March. Everyone was talking about the addition of James Harden, and that certainly gave them a reliable pick and roll game along with a better passer to get guys in their spots but the main reason they look like the best team in the west and also over the years when they have looked like a contender during those times it was due to Kawhi being engaged and playing like the best player in the league they need that or else they will lose this series my question is, will his health allow him to be what he needs to be for an entire series? Because we saw last year against the Suns, he was a killer in the first two games, looking like the best player in basketball, but his body just didn't hold up. And not only will they need him offensively, but they will need him defensively to take away Luka in crunch time. Healthy Kawhi is capable, but is he healthy enough to do so? Now, defensively, the Mavericks have been on a tear recently. We will find out if it's real. Some say their success on that end is just because a majority of their games to end the year were against bottom tier teams. The truth probably lies in the middle, in my opinion. However, on paper, the Clippers definitely present matchup issues for them. That's why I don't think it's just going to be a one-sided series. Both teams have advantages in certain spots. So obviously you put PJ Washington on Kawhi, most likely that's the matchup. You're gonna have to double team him, throw a bunch of different looks at him because you can't just let Kawhi get comfy, isoing all the time because he will get his rhythm. And a in rhythm Kawhi is the scariest sight you will see. I feel like the size of the Clippers hurts Kyrie defensively. He's gonna have a lot on his plate at times. They'll probably put him on Terrence Mann, those types of players. But naturally in the flow of the game, he will be matched up against bigger players like James Harden. I'm sure you're gonna see that matchup every once in a while. So he will have to navigate constant screens, which really isn't his strength. Plus, the Clippers will have Kawhi PG screening him, hunting for that switch constantly. And once again, just in the natural flow of the game, in transition, he will have to pick up guys outside of his initial matchup who are just larger human beings. I think the Clippers can really take advantage of the size against Kyrie. The Mavs really defend by committee, but they're still one defender short in my opinion. P.J. Washington on Kawhi, Derek Jones Jr. probably on Paul George. So Luke is on James Harden. Do you really want him guarding pick and rolls 24-7? Probably not. So you put Derek Jones Jr. on Harden, well then Luke is probably going to have to go on Paul George. That could be an issue if George is on top of his game. However, if I'm being real, if I can trick the Clippers into playing Paul George, James Harden, Ball, more than Kawhi Leonard, Ball, because they believe either of those two can make Luka work and get theirs, then I'm fine with that. Mavericks will most likely switch a ton outside of Kyrie Irving, which could mess up the Clippers flow or get them in a rhythm because they will be ISOing. It's just about if they're hitting their isos in a certain game in my opinion Kawhi centric ball when he's on top of his game is much 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 more scarier and lethal than paul george and james harden centric ball my dumbed down game plan for the dallas mavericks defense would be force the ball out of Kawhi's hands as much as possible when Kawhi's is not engaged the clippers are not an elite team 
congest the lanes and cut off easy attempts at the rim easier said than done make him make contested middies but also force the ball out of his hands as much as possible you can't throw one look at Kawhi and expect to have success. And of course, when you're trying to force it out of his hands, make sure the next pass is either Harden or Terrence Mann because both are not quick trigger shooters. So if you rotate quickly, you can take away their three-pointer because they will pump fake on hard, well-executed closeouts. Then the possession stalls. Clippers have a lot of guys like that where if you close out hard, they might pump fake and ruin the flow. Turns out the Clippers are fourth in the league in three-point percentage, so they have shooters. However, they are 20th in three-pointers attempted per game. That tells me you execute your rotations, you can run them off the line and stall possessions. Also, another aspect is what James Harden are we getting? There are versions of Harden where you can sense he's only looking to pass. Last year, he had two games versus the Celtics he took over, but outside of those two games in the playoffs, he was averaging like 15 points inefficiently while not looking to score for long stretches. So when you can sense that passive Harden, the Mavs got to lessen the tight coverage on that pick and roll and make Harden score. Overall, I think that's the Mavericks pathway to stifling their offense. Make the others beat you and don't let Kawhi reach godlike robot status. James Harden is definitely still good for two amazing games per series at this point in his career, in my opinion, which will ultimately push the Clippers over the edge in some games. So that's just something to keep in mind. Paul George and James Harden, I expect to show up in certain games and look like the best offensive player that night. However, I also expect stinkers, but I think they'll have a few big games and that will result in a long series. Also, more on the Clippers offense, watch out for Norman Powell. I swear I've never seen this man miss. He's shooting 43% from three. He's a big X factor because he's not afraid of the moment and he will be firing away. The battle between Tim Hardaway Jr. and Norman Powell will be interesting because both can be flamethrowers off the bench and swing a game or keep momentum. Daniel Gafford versus Zubak is a huge storyline in my opinion. Outside of Luka versus Kawhi and then Kyrie Irving versus Paul George and James Harden, this is the biggest matchup. When both teams get the good version of those two, they're practically unbeatable. That's something I'm watching immediately because I don't know who has the edge right now. Also, both teams are going to be going small ball quite frequently. However, I hope Jason Kidd sticks with Gafford and Lively more than small ball because their lob threat ability and size just adds another layer to the Mavericks team. Now, the thing is, these teams are trending in the opposite directions post All-Star break. During that time, the Mavericks have the fourth best offensive rating in the league and the 10th best defensive rating, resulting in the third best net rating. The Clippers have dropped off badly, went from the third ranked offense pre-All-Star break to the 10th ranked offense to end the season defensively clippers have completely fallen off a cliff pre-all-star break they were in the middle of the pack 13th ranked defense now they are one of the worst in the league 25th ranked post all-star break this has resulted in the clippers having the 18th ranked net rating post all-star break yuck I think the Clippers defensive game plan, the dumbed down version, is going to be force P.J. Washington, Dante Axum, Derek Jones Jr., basically whoever that other guy is on the court next to Kyrie and Luka to hit open three-pointers at a high volume. And that brings us to the biggest question mark for Dallas. Can P.J. Washington and Derek Jones Jr. stretch the floor enough because those two, especially P.J. Washington, are going to be instrumental to their success on the defensive end of the floor. P.J. Washington has finished the season strong from deep, but is prone to struggle through stretches. That goes for Exum and Jones Jr. as well. Those shooters are the X factors. If they are hitting, the Mavs are unguardable in my opinion. I expect the Mavericks shot quality to be insane. Going back to the Mavericks, their shot quality was insane already all throughout their regular season matchups versus the Clippers, but that was without a lob threat. Zero lobs in the first matchup, one alley-oop attempt in the second matchup, three alley-oop attempts in the third matchup because Derek Lively played. Having real vertical spacing at all times with Gafford and Lively changes things for the Mavericks because you actually have to guard that role or it's a dunk. 
and that opens up the perimeter shooters as well. It's no coincidence the game where the Mavericks scored 144 points versus the Clippers is the game where Derek Lively was playing. They had Dwight Powell starting one game and Holmes the other. That's the dynamic that makes them so tough to guard because you have to account for it or it's just a free two points and a jam at the rim. And that opens up other shots. If Gafford is as impactful as he was to end the season, it's going to be tough for the Clippers. I think a big key for the Clippers is finding a way to play Gafford off the court. He's so important to their offense in terms of little things. And of course, his size rebounding and rim protection wise is huge as well. According to BetUS, the number one online sports book, Clippers are plus 450 to win the Western Conference. Better odds than the Dallas Mavericks, who are currently a plus 850 to win the West. Personally, I like the return of the Mavericks a little more. So I'm going to put down $25 to win $212. Tail my bet for a good time. And remember, support the sponsor of the video. It helps me out a ton. I really do appreciate it. Click the link in the description, make an account. They are currently offering 125% deposit match up to $2,500 on your first three deposits. Meaning you put in 500, you will have 1,250 to play with. Link in the description, help out the sponsor of this channel. It helps me out a ton. Tail my Mavericks bet. Thank you very much. In the fourth quarter down the stretch or in times where the Mavs are humming offensively, that's when I can see Kawhi being on Luka, but I just don't expect it every possession, especially where Kawhi is health-wise, simply because the Clippers in rotation are just bad. And one way to keep them out of rotation is just willingly switching. But that means Luka will have an opportunity to get loose in the ISO situation against matchups he likes. A big question for the series is which team is more effective in ISO ball? Kawhi, Paul George, Harden, or Luka and Kyrie? Because both defenses are built to force that, plus both those guys, all those guys, are insanely good ISO players when they're on top of their game. And I said Kyrie had a disadvantage defending the Clippers, but on the other end, offensively, Kyrie's quickness handle will cause issues for the Clippers. If he's aggressive, like he has been to end his season, and with Luka next to him, he's going to be set up with advantages. I can see him having a hell of a series. Honestly, I can see a world where Kyrie outscores Luka in at least two games this series. And honestly, I don't think Luka's points, him scoring, should be the main focus for Mavs fans. He's going to get his, but Luka Ball is decimating to teams when he's putting up 12 assists and Gafford is getting lobs and Kyrie is cooking off his gravity. The Mavericks are also at their best when he's cooking in crunch time. Kyrie and Luka are top 15 in fourth quarter scoring. If Luka is consistently getting above 11 assists per game and having energy to perform in the fourth quarter, that's a good combo and it's going to result in wins. I low-key can see the Clippers just being like, yo, Luka, get yours. We're going to shut off every other avenue. You got to score 40, which he's capable of, but it can also gas him out in a long series. Overall, those are my random thoughts about this matchup. I think it will be a back and forth series overall, but I'm taking the Mavericks in six games. Give me your predictions down below in the comments section. If you enjoyed at any point, leave a like and subscribe. Check out my other videos if you got time. Have yourself a great day and peace out.